To me, the human aspect of superheroes has always been perhaps the most important part. By that I mean, okay, we assume your superhero might be extra strong or might be able to fly or run as fast as a comet. But unless you care about the superhero's personal life, you're just reading a shallow story. Just because a person has a superpower doesn't mean he might not have the same personal problems that you or I might have. Quicksilver is my favorite superhero. He's gone through so much shit in his life, yet he always gets back up, time and time again. He's been bullied, heartbroken, rode a dinosaur that one time, uh, cause, you know, because comics, and he's even been betrayed by his own family. But he never gives up, and that's why I love Quicksilver. But where did all of this start? Well, for that, I'm going to have to tell you a story. Pietro Maximoff was born on Mount Wondegore as the oldest of a pair of twins, the other being his sister, Wanda Maximoff. As babies, they were experimented on by the High Evolutionary and eventually were given to Django and Mary Maximoff and disguised as their own kids. For years, the two grew up poor and the only thing they had were each other. Pietro grew to be protective of Wanda and wanted to protect her at all costs. But of course, he got the shit beaten out of him. One day, however, the twins learned of their powers and were deemed mutants by society. At this time, and well, pretty much in all history of Marvel Comics, mutants were hated and outcast. After Wanda accidentally burnt down the village they lived in, the twins went on run throughout Central Europe. One day, the two twins were hiding out when people caught wind of their powers. They were attacked and almost killed. Quicksilver got the shit beaten out of him again. But Magneto saved them. He lied to them and claimed to be their father. Being so malnourished and unsure of what was going on, the twins believed Magneto and followed him. Why Magneto pretended to be their father? We're not really sure. Maybe he saw something in them. Maybe he saw these two orphan mutants and he was reminded of his own tragedy and he wanted to take them in the only way he knew how, being their father. The twins believed Magneto and they followed him. They joined the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and with their help, they worked to rid the world of humans. It's at this point where Pietro would don the name Quicksilver, referring his, to his fast speed and white hair. Quicksilver would also clash with his father, not wanting to kill people, but also not wanting to lose the only family he ever had. And while Magneto grew to love his new daughter, he didn't care so much for Pietro. Magneto saw a, a piece of himself in Pietro, he saw the young him that cared for humans, and he felt it was weak. No son of his would care for any humans. For years, they battled the X-Men, thinking of them as their greatest enemies. But eventually, they realized Magneto didn't care for them. He was just using them. He was a manipulator. And so, they left him. They didn't want to be used. But unfortunately, this is something the twins would have to deal with for years to come. They fled the Brotherhood and ultimately sought refuge with the Avengers. They had heard about this team, these heroes, and how they always did what was right. Pietro and Wanda never wanted to hurt anyone. They were just looking out for themselves. So they joined the Avengers. They became superheroes. The new Avengers weren't alone in joining the team. Hawkeye, a recently converted villain, had joined the team too. And they, along with Captain America, were nicknamed Cap's Cookie Quartet. Here's the thing though, Quicksilver was always a hothead, whether he was stealing food from markets or working under Magneto, he was never quite good at following orders. So whenever there was a mission, Quicksilver would go out of his way to do what he felt was right, and this caused more than a few fights with Hawkeye. But they were still a team, and the four heroes even managed to take down some big name villains like Doctor Doom and King the Conqueror. But this wasn't enough for Quicksilver. While Wanda was happy, Pietro felt he was lacking something, a family. The only time he had ever felt something close to that was back in the Brotherhood. So, when Wanda mysteriously vanishes, because comics, Quicksilver feels he has no choice but to leave the Avengers, and he allies himself back with Magneto. This doesn't last long, however, because Wanda's back! You know how comics are. So, after a fight with Magneto, Quicksilver rejoins the Avengers. Wanda gets married to Vision, and while Quicksilver isn't really a fan of that at first, he grows to like Vision, or at least tolerate him. And for a while, everything is great. Quicksilver finally feels at home in the Avengers. He has a place in the world. He's not running for food. He's not 
running to the next fight, he's just taking it slow. Until he almost dies in a sentinel attack. Quicksilver is taken to the Inhumans, a secret group of people with powers, basically like the X-Men but legally distinct enough where Marvel can make a one season show on ABC that goes horribly wrong and then never mention them again. He's put into the care of Crystal, the princess of the Inhumans, and for a while, Quicksilver is just gone. His injuries were near fatal, and the team almost forgot about him. Pietro, however, he's doing just fine. He worked his charm and got into the pants of Crystal and got himself a wife. The, the wife being Crystal, just, just in case it was clear, they didn't have a one night stand, they got into a serious relationship and then got married. N not only that, he's now a dad, having the first ever mutant inhuman hybrid child, Luna Maximoff. And this is the high point of Pietro's life, he's gotten away from his abusive father, made a name for himself as an Avenger, and is a happy husband and father. So what could go wrong, right? Well how about your wife cheating on you? Quicksilver finds out that while he's away on missions with Avengers, his wife has an affair. So he does what any normal hu husband would do. He frames the Avengers for treason. Because comics. Pietro also joins the Soviets and a bunch of evil robots, because why not? However, this is all revealed to be a ploy by Maximus the Mad, Black Bolt's brother, and it turns out Crystal never cheated on Pietro. So now, his sister hates him, his father is a terrorist who wants to kill him, his wife and daughter are mad at him, his team wants revenge, and he's all alone. So... <laughs> yeah, life is pretty shit for Pietro. So, what do you do when all of your life stinks? You join the military! Yeah, America! Guns! Woohoo! Pietro joins the X-Force, a government team of mutants, and goes on various missions. It's here where we learn just how Pietro feels about all of this. We get to see him be a real hero and he starts to make up for all of his sins. Until his sister goes crazy and rewrites reality. A common theme around all of Quicksilver's media in comics, movies, and TV shows is that he always makes mistakes, time and time again. So while Pietro has been dealing with his own life, Wanda became a mom and had twins. And then the twins were actually some dude's hands. And then the hands were actually the soul of a demon. And then the demon was actually the original kids but from another dimension. And then the kids, yada yada, it's really confusing. But all that matters is that when Wanda had her kids, Pietro came back and visited her. He tried to reconnect with his sister, the person he cared most about in his life. However, Wanda kinda goes off the deep end and rewrites reality into a perfect utopia. Spider-Man is married to Gwen Stacy, who no longer has his snap neck, Logan is taller than four feet, and Magneto is the ruler of the world. However, the heroes realize this is all wrong, and they decide to correct this. But they need to find who's responsible for this. Obviously it's Wanda, right? I mean, she rewrote reality. No. It's actually Pietro! So before Wanda went Coco Cuckoo for Coco Puffs, Pietro visited her and was like, hey, uh, all the heroes are planning to kill you, except Spider-Man, because Spider-Man's cool. And Wanda's like, damn, that sucks. And Pietro's like, hey, what if we just rewrite reality? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I don't care, sure. So, she ends up rewriting all of reality, and then that's... It's, it's, it's... Look, comics are complicated, okay? House of X was, was a whole thing. All that matters is that it's Pietro's fault. So, what did the Avengers do? <laughs> they beat the shit out of him again. Like, he, he is, like, bleeding, like, he, he's not breathing. That That's how badly he's wounded. And then, to top it off, Wanda goes full crazy and just deletes all the mutants' powers. So, like, there's no more mutants. Everyone's just a human now. So, he's now crippled, powerless, and has no family or friends. Fun! So, what do you do when you've lost everything? You give up. For the first time in his life, he has absolutely nothing. He always had Wanda, or his wife, or his daughter, but now, nothing. So, he goes to kill himself. Spider-Man, however, is like, no, you have to suffer. And he stops Pietro, and instead tells him, hey, you're a horrible person, and I hope you hate yourself forever, but you still shouldn't be dead. Then, 
Crystal sees all of this and takes pity on her husband. He t she takes him back to Atlan, where he ends up spending time with his daughter. He tries to be happy, he tries just to be a good father and a good husband. But he can't. Something deep down drives him. A drive that's always motivated him. He has to be a hero. Even when he was a little boy, he was running around trying to be good for his dad and mom. Or at least he thought they were his parents, maybe Magneto's his parents, maybe he never had any parents. He doesn't know, but what he does know is that he has to do something. He has to be a hero. So he steals some magic rocks. Not not the Infinity Stones, there, there are other magic rocks that give you powers, kind of. You see, these rocks are actually like poisonous to mutants, but since he isn't a mutant anymore, the rocks give him time powers? I I don't get it either. Um, but, but now he can create time clones of himself, so that's pretty cool. And he goes around to all the mutants who have lost their powers and gives them their powers back. However, it's it's weird, like, they, they get their powers, but then, like, they're super hypersensitive to them. It's like this one girl who can hear everything is now, like, the rain is, like, super loud and so it hurts her ears. It's weird. Son of him was weird. Just, I don't... As you can tell, Pietro has a lot of weird stories because the writers never knew what to do with him. But Quicksilver, or whatever he's going by now, keeps trying to heal mutants. The Inhumans, however, are like, hey, you stole our rocks, we don't like that. So they beat the shit out of him. And Crystal's also like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the kid and getting a divorce. So he kind of goes crazy. And, and then brings mutants powers back, but then he gets a super speed back somehow. It's it's weird. I don't really like this part of his history, so I'm just gonna skip this and go to the next part. After a bunch of world altering events, Quicksilver rejoins the Avengers and everything's hunky-dory. He keeps telling himself though that he's not good enough. He, he failed, he's the reason House of Him happened. He's the reason so many people lost their powers. And he tells himself that he'll never amount to anything. Eventually, the Collector and the Grandmaster, Elders of the Universe, decide to play chess with the world's heroes and villains, and Quicksilver ends up sacrificing himself, destroying the magic sphere, and he dies a hero. Finally. Just kidding, these are comics, nobody stays dead. Turns out he's just frozen in time now. He's stuck in a literal gray limbo, here with nothing to do, Pietro reflects back on his life and realizes he's kind of a dick. He looks back and sees these awful versions of himself that he used to be. But he's not looking back, he's, he's looking right at himself like almost a mirror. Colored versions of himself, yellow, red, orange, blue, green, they all start erupting out of him. He doesn't know what's going on, but they're attacking people, people he knew, and killing them. So, he does the only thing he knows how to do. He starts running. Quicksilver's true enemy is not a big CGI army or some evil brute or a giant gray monster. It's himself. So even though he's tired, hungry, and all alone, Pietro does the one thing he knows best. He runs. He runs faster and faster and faster and faster. But he can't seem to defeat these monsters. That is until he forgives himself. Once he forgives himself, the monsters start to fade away. The past is the past. Pietro can't change that. He's done so many horrible things. Hell, I've done so many horrible things. It's hard, isn't it? Living in this world, getting through each day, it's just so damn difficult. It's hard, isn't it? Living in this world, getting through each day, it is just so damn difficult. We have been hurt so damn much. I know where you come from now. I get it. Pietro is a flawed hero. He's arrogant, he's brash, selfish, and an asshole. But he's not a bad person. Throughout my life, I've struggled with autism, and it's made me an outcast. I've never fit in, and that's made me a selfish person. I wanted to hurt the world like it hurt me. But seeing a superhero, someone who is larger than life, struggle with these same problems, it makes me appreciate the world. Life isn't something to be mad at, it's something to enjoy. Quicksilver will never be the most popular superhero, and that's fine. <laughs> Hell, he won't even be the most popular speedster. Flash has taken that title. But what he will be 
is my inspiration. He will be my favorite superhero. And that's why I love Quicksilver. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video has been a long time in the works and I'm very grateful to have it out. Since I first watched Age of Ultron, I fell in love with this character, his witty charm, cool power set, and just the whole style. But once I started to read his comics, he became my favorite hero. I always loved Spider-Man, Superman, and Gwenpool. They were always cool, but Quicksilver, he was the one for me. He was the one I related to. He was the one I felt got me. And, well, people always ask why I love him so much, and it's hard to explain. You know, you say your favorite superhero is Spider-Man or Batman. People get that, but Quicksilver? Well, I hope this video explains that. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a nice day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And bye!